the ocean. From space, it is a vast, uniform blue. But this serene surface hides a world of staggering complexity, a world that makes up over 95% of the habitable space on our planet, yet remains less explored than the surface of the moon. It is a world divided into layers of light, pressure, and life. The top layer, the sunlit zone, is the world of fish we know. It is a biological metropolis teeming with sleek, powerful, and familiar shapes. The silver torpedo of the tuna, the iridescent flash of the mackerel, the vibrant colors of the coral reef. These are creatures built for a world of light and speed. Their bodies are streamlined for hydrodynamic efficiency. Their muscles are powerful for chasing prey or escaping predators, and their eyes are sharp. This is our baseline for what a fish should be. But this world has a bottom, and as we descend past the reach of the sun, the rules of life begin to change, and the familiar blueprint of the fish is twisted into forms of almost unimaginable strangeness. This is a journey into the abyss to understand why fish get creepier the deeper you go. Our descent begins into the twilight zone, the mesopelagic. Here, from 600 to 3,000 feet down, the sun is a fading ghost. The pressure builds and the temperature plummets. This zone is home to the largest animal migration on Earth. Every single night, billions of creatures, from tiny krill to the fish that hunt them, swim up from the depths to feed in the richer surface waters, only to retreat back into the darkness before dawn. In this world of perpetual dusk and vertical movement, the old rules of camouflage and speed begin to fail. A new set of tools is required for survival. Meet the hatchet fish. Its body is impossibly thin and laterally compressed, like a silver coin with fins. Its face is a grotesque mask with huge, tubular eyes that are permanently fixed looking upwards, scanning the gloom above for the faint silhouettes of prey. But its true genius is on its belly. It is lined with light-producing organs called photophores. The hatchet fish can control the brightness of these lights to perfectly match the faint sunlight filtering down from above. This is a sophisticated form of camouflage called counter-illumination, effectively making the fish invisible to predators looking up from below. It is a living ghost. As we go deeper into the twilight, we meet the viper fish. This is where the word creepy begins to feel inadequate. The viper fish is a hunter, and its primary weapon is its teeth. They are so long, so disproportionately huge, that they don't fit inside its mouth. When its jaws closed, the lower fangs curve back up past its own eyes. To even swallow its prey, its skull is hinged, allowing it to pivot its head up and open its jaw to an incredible degree, swallowing fish larger than its own stomach. It is a living trap of needle-sharp fangs. Here, too, we find the fang tooth. While small, it holds the record for the largest teeth in the ocean relative to its body size. Its lower fangs are so long that it has evolved two special sockets on either side of its brain for the teeth to slide into when its mouth is closed, preventing it from impaling itself. It is a creature whose own weapons are so extreme its body had to evolve a safety mechanism just to contain them. Now, we leave the last vestiges of sunlight behind and enter the midnight zone, the bathypelagic. We are over 3,000 feet down. The darkness is absolute. The pressure is immense, enough to crush a military submarine. And food is incredibly scarce. Life here is a waiting game, played in total blackness. To survive here, the fish have become monsters. This is the realm of the anglerfish. It is perhaps the most iconic monster of the deep. It has a massive, cavernous mouth filled with translucent, needle-like teeth. Its body is soft and flabby, a low-energy design for a world where every calorie counts, 
And then there is the feature that gives it its name, a long, fleshy filament growing from its head, at the end of which is a glowing lure. This light is not magic. It is a symbiotic relationship with bioluminescent bacteria which the anglerfish cultivates in its personal lantern. In the crushing dark, this single point of light is an irresistible beacon. Smaller fish and crustaceans swim in for a closer look, and in a flash, it engulfs them. The giant mouth opens, and they are gone. But the anglerfish's horror has another layer. The large, monstrous ones we see are all female. The males are tiny, pathetic creatures whose only purpose is to find a female. When a male locates a female, he bites her, and his body begins to physically fuse with hers. His circulatory systems merge. His eyes and internal organs wither away until he is nothing more than a parasitic pair of testes, providing sperm on demand. It is a grotesque and permanent act of reproduction. Here in the dark, we also find the dragonfish. It is a long, black, eel-like predator. Like the anglerfish, it has a bioluminescent lure on its chin to attract prey, but it has a secret weapon. Most bioluminescence in the deep sea is blue or green. The dragonfish, however, has a second light-producing organ under its eye that can produce red light. This is a profound advantage, because most deep-sea creatures have evolved to see blue light and are physically incapable of seeing red. The dragonfish has, in effect, developed an invisible infrared sniper scope. It can illuminate its prey with a red light that the prey cannot see, allowing it to hunt with total stealth. And for a truly alien body plan, we meet the gulper eel. Also known as the pelican eel, this creature is little more than a giant mouth attached. Its body tapers to a long, whip-like tail. Its jaw is loosely hinged and can unhinge to an incredible degree, allowing it to swallow prey much larger than itself. Its stomach can also stretch to accommodate these rare, oversized meals. It is the ultimate adaptation for a world where you have to be able to eat whatever you are lucky enough to find, no matter the size. Finally, we descend into the abyss, below 13,000 feet. The pressure is over 600 times that at the surface. The water is just above freezing. Here, we find what may be the single strangest vertebrate on our planet, the Barrelai fish. For a long time, it was a complete mystery to science. What we see from the side are two small indentations that look like eyes. But those are its nostrils. Its real eyes are inside its head, beneath a completely transparent, fluid-filled dome of skin. They are two massive, green, tubular lenses that are usually pointed straight up, allowing the fish to spot the silhouettes of prey from the at the absolute deepest, darkest part of the ocean, a fish with a transparent head waits. When it finds a target, its internal eyes can rotate forward, allowing it to track its meal as it moves in for the kill. Life here is about extreme energy conservation. The tripod fish exemplifies this. It rests on the seafloor, propped up on three long, stilt-like extensions of its fins, facing into the current, waiting for a small crustacean to drift into its mouth. It is a living statue, a hunter that has evolved to barely move at all. So why does this happen? Why this descent into monstrous forms? The answer lies in the three brutal laws of the deep sea. No light, no food, and no escape from pressure. The lack of light is the primary driver, it forced the evolution of bioluminescence, the ability to create your own light. This light is used as a lure, as a form of communication, as a defense to startle predators, and as camouflage. It also drove the evolution of eyes, either making them enormous and hypersensitive like the barrel eyes, or getting rid of them entirely. The scarcity of food is the second law. 
In a world where your next meal might be weeks or months away, you cannot afford to be picky, and you cannot afford to waste energy. This led to the evolution of massive mouths and expandable stomachs. It also led to low-energy bodies. Deep-sea fish have watery, gelatinous flesh with very little muscle, because muscle requires a huge amount of calories to maintain. Their entire strategy is to sit and wait, a living trap that expends almost no energy until the moment of the strike. The final law is the immense, crushing pressure. This is why deep-sea fish look so strange when brought to the surface. Their bodies are not designed to hold their shape in our low-pressure world. They survive the pressure because they have no internal air spaces, like a swim bladder, that would collapse. Their bodies are mostly water, which is incompressible, and their very proteins and enzymes. They are protected by special molecules called piezolites, which allow their cells to function under pressures that would destroy ours. From the sleek torpedo of the tuna to the transparent ghost of the barrel eye, the journey down is a journey into a different world with a different set of rules. The fish of the deep are not monsters. They are not creepy, failed experiments. They are survivors. They are masterpieces of evolution, perfectly adapted to the most hostile environment on our planet. Their bizarre forms are not a sign of nature getting it wrong, but a testament to the incredible and sometimes terrifying power of life to find a way.